If you have your GCSE maths exam this summer and still feel underprepared, then watch this video to learn just how to get that grade 9 in the most effective way possible. As someone who never got maths just like that, I went back to the basics to see what wasn't adding up and it all started with relearning those key concepts. Not having a solid base leads to weak foundations, so don't be ashamed to go back to the start and relearn the simple stuff and how to redo it. Chances are, if something's not clicking, going back all the way to the start to seeing what the issue is will help you in the long run because when you come back to that topic, eventually getting back to where you were, it'll be much easier because you have done most of the topic already and once you fix the issue with that thing at the start, the rest of it will become much smoother to go through. One thing you need to know is that math is a game and all about scoring those points and the way to doing so is by practicing regularly. And I don't mean just doing past papers without understanding, but instead check out Corbett Maths. They have this thing called five a day where it gives you five questions ranging in difficulty and ranging in the topics that come up. And each day, if you can do those five questions or at least do some of them, you'll be building up some confidence in your maths knowledge. So yeah, by practicing regularly, essentially you'll build up your own confidence and know in the end that you can do it when it comes to the paper because it's all the questions that came up with the same topics and the same types of difficulty that you've already conquered before. Now, a super underrated tip is keeping a checklist. It can serve as a visual guide and aid for you to go through and tick off the topics as you do them. And essentially, it'll be like a real life progress bar where you can keep seeing it go up and up as you tick off more topics as you revise. But one thing I do wanna say is keeping a checklist in no way, shape or form means that you have to do every single topic on that checklist before you do practice questions. Instead, it's the exact opposite. As soon as you do that topic, get a bit of practice in with the theory and then move on to the next one. You don't want to do all the theory and then try and cram in all the practice a couple days before the exam. That's where a lot of people mess up. Make sure you don't do that. Now, the fourth tip to getting a grade nine in GCSE maths is repeat, repeat, repeat. Maths is all about practice and practice is universal for every subject. But honestly, when it comes to maths, this has never been true more. If you wanna know what people are doing to get grade nines in GCSE maths, it is practicing regularly, doing some questions listen and often, or even doing those five a day. And by doing them, you'll at least have a bank of knowledge and a bank of questions already pre-built before it even comes to doing past papers. So long story short, when it comes to the exam, those five to six markers won't scare you because you'll have done them so many times before you'll know exactly where to put everything and make sure that you get the maximum number of marks possible and i'll focus more on this in the later part in the video but i do want to say that maths and practice go hand in hand together so if you want that grade nine for gcse maths there is no compromising on that now exactly as the title says there is only one maths resource that i used i'm not counting past papers to learn all the topics I didn't understand, anything I was weak on, or just going back over the topics. And that is this amazing channel called GCSE Maths Tutor. And if you haven't come across this channel, the explanations are super simple and he goes through the questions step by step to make sure you know exactly what to do when it comes to doing some of your own. I genuinely have to attribute my GCSE Maths grade to him and his channel because when it comes to doing even simple topics or those big harder questions, his channel is where it's at. Now, in this section, we're gonna focus more on the exam itself rather than doing topics. And the first section on this is how to fix losing marks. Similar to science, in GCSE Maths, you need to show every single step that you did to get to the question as well as the answer. That way, it's really easy for the examiners to go through and see how you went about the question, your process, and how you got to your answer. One way to fix losing mistakes is writing every single step down. Even things that you think may be super simple that you don't need to write down, just write them down. You have no idea whether that could save you from losing a mark. And when you do find that you lost marks on the paper, one thing you can do is go through the paper yourself, go through the mark scheme, and GCSE maths mark schemes are normally really well laid out because they have all the questions and then all the answers step by step and how they did them. So if you did go wrong somewhere, you can kind of go back to your process and compare it to the one on the mark scheme and see whether there are a few mistakes in there. And follow this formula, mark, read, watch and repeat and get those marks that you originally missed out on. Now for this last tip, I'm gonna go through proper exam technique and the best thing to do when it comes to doing the paper overall in the summer. And that is not to go through back to front. Honestly, a lot of the times I see people that say they do the paper back to front. But one issue that I think arises from this is when you do the questions back to front, of course you all know that GCSE maths, the paper is laid out so the easier questions start, 
then you have another topic and it's a bit harder, then it's a bit harder, and then the hardest questions are at the end. Oftentimes you lose confidence, you find out that it was super hard, and then when it comes to the easy stuff, you just end up doubting yourself, you feel like you can't do it, and then you don't get the marks that are really easy. And then the other thing I always recommend to people is that when you do the paper and you find that there are a few things that you don't understand or a question, one, don't panic make a little mark on it or something that's recognizable when it comes to flipping through the paper so that when you go through the paper and finish all the questions you'll see there's two or three marks on the page for the questions that you didn't understand then when you finish the paper and you have a clear head you come back to those three questions or however many there are go through them and maybe this time get the right answer thanks so much for watching if you did find this video useful please like share comment and subscribe and if you are a gcse student with no idea what to do then watch the video above me for some more tips but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll be back next week with a brand new one bye for now